Another thing that a graph can be or not be is Hamiltonian. So we call a graph Hamiltonian if it has a so-called Hamilton cycle. This is a cycle that passes through each vertex. Since it is a cycle, it cannot pass through vertices multiple times, so automatically, by definition of a cycle, it will pass through each vertex exactly once. So to compare this to what it means to be Eulerian, for an Eulerian graph, we required the existence of a closed trail that passed through each edge exactly once. Now we require a closed trail that passes through each vertex exactly once. The only thing that we do is we exclude the trivial trail. So a cycle, remember, has to contain at least one edge. So the trivial walk is not a cycle. But apart from this trivial example, apart from the case where you have a graph with just one vertex, you're good. Now, you can ask the following question. Is there an easy way to see if a graph is Hamiltonian? So for Euler graphs, there was. The easy way was just to count the degree. You zoom in on each vertex and you count the number of edges that go into the degree. Can we do a similar thing uh, with Hamiltonian? For example, this graph, the Peterson graph, is it Hamiltonian? It turns out that there is no such easy way. In fact, the problem of determining whether a graph is Hamiltonian or not is a so-called NP-complete problem. Uh, in some sense, this, this means that the problem has very high complexity, and in some sense, if you can solve this problem, you can solve any problem. Of course, if the graph is simple enough, you will be able to see if the graph is Hamiltonian or not. So, for example, this graph is Hamiltonian because just walking around the cycle uh, gives you your Hamilton cycle and this is not affected if I add edges or loops here. This graph is semi-Hamiltonian because I have a path going from here to here but it doesn't close. Whereas, for example, this graph is neither. There is no way to go through all vertices along either a path or a cycle uh, that will contain all vertices. But still, you can give sufficient conditions and necessary conditions for a graph to be Hamiltonian. So one sufficient condition, meaning that if the condition is fulfilled, then the graph is Hamiltonian, but not necessarily the other way around. One such condition was given by Dirac in 1952. So Dirac said that if you take a simple graph with at least three vertices, and if the degree of each vertex is at least half the total number of vertices, then you're good, then the graph is Hamiltonian. So uh, this, uh, in a sense, means that if you have enough edges, you will be fine. Among these many edges, you will find at least one Hamilton cycle. This uh, theorem is, in fact, a special case of a theorem that came eight years later, uh, and that was formulated by the Norwegian mathematician Øystein Ure. Ure claimed and proved that if G is a simple graph, again, with at least three vertices, and if the degree of the sum of the degrees of any two vertices that are not adjacent is at least n, the number of vertices, then the graph is Hamiltonian. So in Dirac's case, if you take any V and W and you sum up the degree, for any two vertices, adjacent or not, then this, these are each n half at least, so the sum is at least n. So if you can prove Ure's theorem, which is much more general than Dirac's, then uh, Dirac's theorem will follow. So 
we will prove Ure's theorem and we will prove the equivalent statement, the contrapositive statement, that if G is not Hamiltonian, then you will be able to find two vertices that are not adjacent and such that the sum of the degrees R is too small. Okay, so this is what we will prove. We'll prove that if the graph is not Hamiltonian, then we will find such vertices. And here we remember we need to also prove that V and W are not adjacent, meaning there is no edge between them. So how do we do this? Well, start with the graph G and add edges to the graph. Add edges one by one until you get a graph where, so add edges one by one without making the graph Hamiltonian until you get a graph H where you can't do this anymore. I'm not claiming this H is unique, but if you keep adding edges to the graph, at some point you're in a situation where whichever edge you add will make the graph Hamiltonian. If not, you will add the edge that will not make it Hamiltonian and carry on until you get to this position. So now we have a graph H, which is one edge short of being Hamiltonian, whichever edge will make it Hamiltonian. So in this graph, we have a non-closed Hamiltonian path from V1 to Vn. Why is that? Well, because if I add an edge, I will make it Hamiltonian. So if I add an edge, I will get a Hamiltonian cycle, meaning that without this edge, I don't have a Hamiltonian cycle, but I have a Hamiltonian path that goes V1, V2, ta-da-da, Vn. Now, V1 and Vn are not adjacent. Why are they not adjacent? Because if they were, then I would have a Hamiltonian cycle. So I have these non-adjacent vertices, and all in all, these are all the vertices of H, because remember, a Hamiltonian path goes through all vertices. So I might have other edges here and there in the graph, but I don't have other vertices. The edges will be coming back to vertices in this path. Now, what we will show is that these non-adjacent vertices, V1 and Vn, in fact satisfy this property that the sum of the degrees is smaller than n. So why is that? Well, first of all, if you look at any vertex Vi inside this path, and you compare VI and the vertex to the left of it, it cannot be the case that you both have an edge from the previous vertex to VN, as well as an edge from VI to V1. Why is that? Because if you did, you would be able to construct a Hamiltonian cycle. You go from V1 to VI minus one, then on your edge to VN, so on this edge, then back to Vi, and then on the supposed edge to V1. But we said that our graph is not Hamiltonian, so it cannot have such a cycle. This means that for each Vi that has an edge to Vn, its vertex to the left of it has no edge to V1 which means that the number of vertices adjacent to V1 plus the number of vertices adjacent to Vn is smaller than n, because each vertex that is adjacent to V1 forbids the vertex next to it from being adjacent to Vn. And since V1 and Vn are not adjacent, uh, our, equality will, our inequality will be strict, so altogether you will not have enough edges so that they will make up n edges. Pause and think through this argument. Each edge from any vi to v1 forbids vi minus 1 from having an edge to n. So by this exclusion principle we cannot have more than n edges going into either n or 1. But then we're done. This means that the degree of V1 plus the degree of Vn, which is exactly uh, 
this, these things because the graph is simple. This is smaller than n in our graph h. But now we got our graph h by adding edges from our original graph g. So this answers this y. If the degrees are not big enough in h, then certainly they will not be in g because g is obtained by removing edges from h. So this proves the theorem. Okay, so now that we have this sufficient condition, we can ask, is this condition at least close enough to being necessary? So will we be able to detect all Hamiltonian graphs with this condition? Well, as it turns out, no. This condition is quite far from being necessary. The probably most obvious Hamiltonian graph is the cycle graph because then the cycle itself uh, is a Hamiltonian cycle. In such a graph, any uh, vertex has degree 2. So when you sum up the degrees of two vertices, you get 4, which is going to be smaller than n, if n is at least 5. So cycle graphs do not satisfy Ura's condition, and still they are Hamiltonian. So that is not uh, a necessary condition, but there is a necessary condition that is given in different terms. So you have a graph that is Hamiltonian, then it is two vertex connected. So in order to be Hamiltonian, necessarily the graph has to be two vertex connected. Remember two vertex connected means that if you just remove one vertex, the graph will still be connected. So let's prove this proposition. How does this work? Well, if you have a Hamiltonian graph and you have a Hamilton cycle, then if you remove any vertex, well, this cycle included all the vertices of your uh, graph. So if you remove one vertex, well, you will break up this uh, cycle into a path, but you still have one path that connects all the remaining vertices. So in particular, the graph you're left with is connected. Therefore, the graph that you started with was in fact two vertex connected. Great, so now we have a necessary condition and then we can ask, is this necessary condition sufficient? Filled with optimism, we ask this question, but it's not sufficient. The Peterson graph definitely is two vertex connected, but one can show that it is not Hamiltonian. So there is no good condition for being Hamiltonian. You have a strong sufficient condition and you have a necessary condition and you have to live with that.